Welcome to LycomingFootball.com. It's a Wednesday again. Uh, Lycoming College has just come off a win uh, over a pretty good uh, Wilkes team. Uh, shut down their running attack and uh, uh, they won by 34 to 18. Uh, we're talking to, uh, I'm not sure your title, uh, Scott Brisson. Yep. The uh, offensive, uh, I'd say, like coordinator. You got it. Okay. Yep. Okay. And you mainly deal with the quarterback and the uh, wide receivers. I do. Yeah. It's a uh, like we were saying earlier. It's a good, great group of kids. Um, you know, love football. Just like a lot of the guys here, it's a, it's a really special group too, a really easy group to coach. And. Uh, uh, I know you weren't happy with week number one and everyone wanted to look ahead to week sure. two, uh, but it is good to look in retrospect. Uh, uh, a lot of times teams come out of the out of the shoot pretty cold. We were pretty cold up at Rochester. We were, and uh, it, you know, we, we always evaluate the tape with all the guys and, and, and you know, go through, and there were a lot of teachable moments there, and, and to be quite honest, John, there were a lot this past weekend, you know. Uh, we turned the ball over three times inside the five-yard line, and, um, you know, a big goal of ours throughout camp was exchanging field goals last year for touchdowns this year, you know, and, and being more efficient as far as, you know, scoring touchdowns in the red zone and certainly not turning the ball over down there, uh, one of which was run back for a touchdown, as you know. So, um, you know, that's really a, a two-touchdown swing there. Um, so, you know, again, uh, we always talk to the kids about being process-oriented and, you know, Yes, we played well at, at times uh, against Wilkes, um, but again, if you're just happy with the result and you focus on solely the win, uh, I think that leads to a lot of inconsistency down the road. So, um, you know, again, you, you always find as a coach, you always find things to, to harp on, but there, there was actually a fair amount of easy things to uh, select this week, especially in some situations. It's always good to look, though, at uh, some of the accomplishments, and I Absolutely. picked up on that word efficiency, Yep. and you can't get much more efficient than and Tyler Jenny, the junior quarterback, who uh, had 20 of 21 pass uh, completions uh, for 305 yards, yep. a pretty good, uh, a pretty good day's work. There's no question, and, and you know, like like we were talking about before the camera was on here, uh, that doesn't happen just with Tyler. It, it, it's it's really the whole offense. It's how are we protecting? Um, you know, are the receivers where they need to be? Are we making plays when we're open? Are we staying efficient on first down where we can? You know, if, if we're playing well offensively. Uh, it's because we can play action and take some shots down the field, which is what we were able to do on Saturday. If we're playing inefficiently, like we were against Brockport, we're in a lot of drop back uh, protections and things like that, and we're playing outside of what we're comfortable doing. So uh, we were able, you know, we had as many play action shots as we did drop back, um, you know, snaps on Saturday. And that, I told the guy, I mean, that's an unbelievable sign for us offensively that we were able to play that way. And I think that's where you see the, the 20 for 21, that's a byproduct of a lot of other things things throughout the day you know it's it's all 11 guys it's, it's we're being efficient on first down we can run and pass with equal efficiency and that's where you see a number like that well it wasn't any secret that our offensive line uh, had a tough day at uh, Brockport up in Rochester uh, but uh, I think what do we have just one sack uh uh, yeah, sure two, two, real, two. Two, two really. Yeah. And, and again, it's important to note uh, in the Brockport game, I think, again, a lot of people see the end result of something. You know, Tyler was wrong as far as identifying a couple protections. Um, you know, not to pile on, you know, we always talk to the kids about moving on, but it, was, it wasn't just him. They, they did a good job coaching. You know, there was a new staff, and we didn't have a ton of tape mm -hmm. on them, mm -hmm. and, and it took us a while a little bit as, a, as an offensive staff to figure out what was going on, and by that point, they had already tallied, you know, four or five sacks. And, again, if you can – if you're us – and we're playing a one-dimensional game, uh, especially if it's in the drop-back pass game. We're we have a lot of problems, you know, and, and that's not how we want to play. Um, but if we can again keep people off balance, run and pass-wise, and we can play action um, and be very multiple as far as that's concerned, again, that's where you see us move the ball maybe a little bit more in concert with what you saw on Saturday. Yeah, and you say uh, you know more of a balanced offense, and I I uh, do know Craig uh, Needhammer had. Uh, uh, maybe 25 carries this week for 138 yards yep. or something like that uh, versus 12 uh, carries for 85 yards the previous exactly. week. But we were always playing catch-up at Rockport and, uh, 
and uh, so I, I know that's what you're trying to do. Tell me what you're doing with Tyler. You work with him a lot, and I think his goal is to get better. Very smart kid. It's um, he, he's this is my fourth year coaching quarterbacks, and I and I worked for some really really good quarterback coaches in the past, and, and really learned a lot from them. Um, Tyler is it, it's all relative, but Tyler is, is really the best I've been around as far as number one wanting to be the best guy you know the best quarterback that's ever been here mm -hmm. uh he he's really driven to do that and um he is he's phenomenal as far as you tell him something this happened yesterday with something you know I'm, i won't get into the specifics of it but you tell him something one time and that's it you, you don't have to ever have to tell him it again uh and he knows exactly what you're talking about if he made a mistake um so in that sense it's just so so much fun to coach him uh because you feel like you always have to be a step ahead of him and I always want to feel like I'm challenging him and, and things like that. Uh, but he's, again, uh, he's a, a real pleasure to coach and, uh, just because he is so hungry to absorb every piece of information. You know, he was... Uh, he was in a way after Brockport. I had never seen him, and it was, a, it was one of the silver linings of that game uh, that I saw him really, for the first time, maybe feel like he was responsible for us losing the game and, and and that really facilitated a leadership role uh from him that i had never seen out of him before mm -hmm. uh which i was thrilled you know i was thrilled with if you if we're gonna lose let's at least take some things from it you know and, and and tyler's really good as far as that's concerned um and again he just he loves football uh, i think you need that at the quarterback position uh he's a great athlete he loves the game he wants to know everything that the defense is doing um and then how what we're doing applies to that and again, that's why I think you, when he's playing really well, he's a step ahead of what the defense is doing because he already, if they're doing what we've seen on tape, he already can figure all that out and where he should go with the football, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Another thing I like about him, I know he was down a little bit from the Brockport game, but he's the type of guy that uh, he has a short memory. Yep. If he makes a mistake, you can't keep dwelling on yep. the mistakes. He, he just... He just seems to uh, throw that away and try to learn from it and and go on and not sulk in a, in uh, maybe some bad decisions. Yeah, and again, I'm glad that's apparent to other people besides me. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's really enjoyable to coach a kid like that. And again, if you trick him defensively, uh, that's that's going to be it. You know, he's going to you know tip his cap to you and and you know we'll figure it out as a staff and then. You know that he's not going to allow that to happen again. So um, again, I, I think a lot of that is just because he wants to do it. You know, a lot of those things doesn't take any skill to do. It's just you know, do you have the desire to do it? You know, he's in my office all the time. Um, you know, and, and again, I know that he loves the foot. Sometimes with a lot of kids, it's an act. It, it's not an act with him. Mm -hmm. He he absolutely loves the game, um, and he loves. You know, really looking looking at what defense are doing, how are they trying to attack us, and then where can I, what can I do? How can I get us into the right run? How can I get us into the right protection and play? Where does where does the ball need to go um, for us to be successful offensively? You know, so he really understands the the you know the game uh, within the game and and really enjoys preparing for it. Coming up Saturday, uh, Misericordia, their second year in the yep. league, I believe, and. Uh, uh, they've scored a lot of points, have a good running attack. Uh, how do we match up offensively against their defense? Well, um, you know, uh, their head coach, Coach Ross, is their defensive coordinator. He's a phenomenal coach, you know, first and foremost. And, and uh, he was the defensive coordinator at Ithaca when I was the offensive coordinator at St. Lawrence. Um, and, and there was a lot of carryover between the two programs there. So I, first and foremost, I think the world of him, he's very challenging to prepare for. Um, they throw a lot of different pressures at you. Uh, he's very good as far as identifying things that you're good at offensively and, you know, try to hang your hat on them and then take them away. So, you know, you almost need a counter to things that we hang our hat on because you know that he's going to be prepared for that in critical situations. So, um, you know, again, all you can do is it, it's a process, John, you know, and just like we tell the kids, it, it's you know, Wednesday is a red zone and third down day for us. It's a big situation day for us. So we go ahead and we watch the tape of what they've done in those situations and try to put a good plan together and, uh, you know, just go ahead and try to execute it. And, and knowing that they'll, they'll be well coached, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's always fun going against a guy that, uh, uh, again, you really, really respect a lot. 
um, you know, like Coach Ross and, and their defensive staff. I'll tell you what, you know, they, they are good. Um, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're well coming co- on fast. Absolutely, mm-hmm. and offensively they've started, you know, to kind of catch up a little bit and, and really move the ball against some really, really good teams. So, um, you know, anybody that went to the game last year, again, kind of saw that. I think they were a little bit surprised, especially maybe by the, the, the halftime score, but it's really a credit to what, what they've done. They, they're really, really good coaches, and they've recruited really well. They're just young, you know, and uh, once that starts to, to catch up, we'll have our hands full, mm-hmm. you know, and, and again, that's not coach speak. They're, they're, they're really well coached, and uh, it should be a fun game, you know, mm-hmm. but again, we, we, we talk every week, John, about nameless, faceless opponents. You know, and if we can prepare, if we are, if we're the best Lycoming offense and we're the best Lycoming defense that we can be on that day, we should be, you know, relatively successful. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what you want to measure yourself against, and uh, you know, whoever the opponent happens to be that week, that's that's who they are. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, uh, there you have it. Uh, Lycoming plays Misericordia on Saturday. I think it's a one thirty. Yeah, a little a little later a little this later, week. Little later, and uh, so hope you join. Uh, Everyone here at uh, David Person Field. Thanks, Scott. No problem. Thank you, John. Thanks, This has been a production of LikeHummingFootball.com.